Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And we have got a lot to discuss tonight. We're talking college football, we're talking NFL, we're talking college basketball. Next week, we will do the Super Bowl preview, along with all the other stuff that goes with that. Uh, But this week, you know, we got Major League Baseball Hall of Fame, all sorts of stuff. Uh, First things first, though, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on those, along with all the other stuff they got going on. They got concerts, they got comedy shows, they got everything else. Uh, Go find it over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button on the video. And make sure and leave some comments. Whatever topic we're discussing, go ahead and hop in on that. And uh, and we would like to hear your opinion. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure that you hit subscribe. Of course, leave a nice review if you would so kindly. Let's go ahead and fire in to... Topic number one. I, I I don't know what's going on. My wife is immediate. Did you stir? Oh, he's stirring. Oh, yeah. So apparently my son is not quite asleep yet. Um, topic number one. College football. We have a bunch to discuss with this, of course. Uh, obviously, we are not quite out of silly season just yet. A lot of coaching changes, a lot of, uh, lot of transfers, all sorts of stuff. We have not hit National Signing Day, the old school National Signing Day. First thing I want to talk to you about, Houston quarterback Derek King transfers to Miami to play for offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley and head coach Manny Diaz. Uh, I I want to know, do you think that he can make them good? No. Well, he can make them better than they were, okay? Because I do think he's a really good quarterback. I don't understand this move at all. I don't. I, I don't understand at, what he was thinking. At Houston, two years in Dana Holgerson's system, in the American, they could compete this year for the American title, win a championship, and and a conference championship, and be in a New Year's Six Bowl. They they are going to have that ability with him as the trigger man if he could convince some of those other guys that did the same thing that they were all going to red shirt and come back. Um, and I think he's the linchpin of that. Going to a place like Miami, I don't get it all. They're not close to winning anything. If, well, I, if, if I you do, think they're a quarterback away, you're that's wrong. what I was going to say. I, I I thought maybe this past year, if they had a competent quarterback, they could have won a lot of those games that they lost. Uh, but it wasn't just quarterback play. A nope. lot of it was it, those guys. And I, I, but I wonder how much having a competent quarterback would have changed uh, them basically just quitting in a lot of these games. Uh, well, yeah, they, they probably wouldn't quit. Like, would they have gotten blown out by some of these teams if they got dusted? Probably not. But I don't think it changes much in the win-loss column. And it damn sure doesn't have them competing for the ACC. Hey, you you might be right about that. Um, looking at their 2020 schedule right now, um, they play Temple to start off with. And if they ain't careful, Temple will, will beat their brains in. Wait, that's uh, right. That's but right. That, but that and is that's, it, it's in And Miami. that's an opponent that knows King. And they're not scared of him. They've no. already played him. You're right about that. They play Wagner second. They play UAB third. Uh, so, it, looking at the schedule, if things go the way they should, they'll beat 3-0 and before they go to Michigan State. That is their out-of-conference game this year, uh, and they got to play them in East Lansing. Now, Michigan State hadn't exactly been great either, but, you know, we'll see. They, uh, they host Pitt. They play at Wake Forest. They host North Carolina. They play at Virginia. Uh, they host Florida State. They play at Virginia Tech, then at Georgia Tech and Duke. Um, well, look, the ACC, and especially their division of the ACC, it's not great. All right, no. it's not very good. There's a lot of winnable games there, but I, I just don't know. I, I, they they did not look like a very cohesive team. I don't know if I'm sold on Manny Diaz being a good head coach yet. Um, They have talent in Miami. If you're not getting talent in Miami, shame on you. But, uh, but you know, I don't know that they were a quarterback away from being good. I I was shocked that that's where he landed. I I agree with you. I I was shocked as well. Like I said, maybe 
with a competent quarterback, maybe it gets the rest of these guys to buy in. Uh, but this is a one-year thing. Like, they are still going to have to develop a quarterback. Uh, I'm curious what they look like under Rhett Lashley. Uh, Lashley, it, other than his stint at UConn, everywhere he has gone, he has been running somebody else's system, right? So he was right. he was under Gus Malzahn at Auburn. You know that's Gus's thing. And then he was at SMU last year with Sonny Dykes. And you know that that's Sonny Dykes' offense. So what is he going to do on his own with a guy that knows nothing about offense? I, I'm curious. Uh, the next topic, Dave Aranda is the new head coach at Baylor. We haven't had a chance to discuss it yet. Uh, today, he hired Jorge Munoz from LSU as his OC. Uh, Munoz, we, we talked on the show and assumed that he was going to be the guy to take Joe Brady's passing. spot. Yeah. Um, now, my buddies down at LSU tell me that it's still in flux and LSU could hire him back, um, depending on money and everything else. Now, if Baylor wants to pay somebody to be an OC, they can afford it. I mean, they were paying Matt Rule, you know, close to $7 million a year. Uh, but, you know, I, I am curious. He is from Louisiana. He is from down there. He was the offensive coordinator at uh, Louisiana Lafayette, you know, at, how much does home matter here? What What do you no, think of the he, hire? I, 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 well, I'm, uh, the I'm hire proud of, that, of Aranda, how's that? I'm Let proud me. that Aranda got a job. Yeah. And I know that he's been – I didn't want him to take one. I wanted him to be Brett Venables and totally happy being a D.C. the rest of his life. That's a selfish thing. The man's wanted to be a head coach for a while, and I knew – He's not leaving for one of these lower tier G five jobs. Yeah, like he's not taking a massive pay cut to 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 be a head coach with with no security at LSU. He could be the DC forever there, and and him and Ed Ordron could have could have made this run for the rest of their life if they want it. Um, I, I fully believe that. And, and and now he he didn't have to settle. He he got a kind of a big boy. Power five job. Baylor yeah. has become, you know. There were Matt only Rule. two things that he was going to leave for. He was either going to leave to be a DC in the NFL or a P5 head coach. But see, I don't, know that he, I don't know that he wanted to go to the NFL much. That's that's what everybody has said is that he was either going to go be a DC in the NFL. People, or people that. said that, but you never heard him talk about it. And he never interviewed for any of those jobs. That's, that's true. I mean, you, like you if a guy's point. like he did interview for other head coaching jobs and he just never took any of them. I get that. If a guy's never interviewing for a job, just because media thinks this is a good idea, this guy would be a good DC in the NFL. Yeah, he probably would because defense isn't like offense and it's about solving problems more than it's about, being innovative and creative uh, on offense, it's it's can you watch game film and, and find a guy's flaws and and, and and expose them a little bit? But uh, you know, he, he never interviewed for any of those gigs. Yeah, I, I never understood where people got that, other than he's too good to be where he's at, which I don't understand that at all. No, the so it, all of the stuff that I read about it was the people that were close to him said that his dream was always to coach in the NFL. Uh, as a DC, because you can obviously make the jump from DC to head coach. Head coach, that's right. Um, but that that would be the only things that he would leave LSU for. He yeah. he wasn't leaving to make a lateral DC move no. in college. It was either going to be P five head coach at a at a good job. Good job. I, I don't even know that he would have left for you know Wake Forest or. You know, oh no! Like I, there's that. no there's no there's no chance. I think he thinks the Big Twelve is there to be got. Yeah. He just beat the hell out of Oklahoma, and they're the only team Baylor lost to, and I think he feels like, I think I know how to beat this team. Hey, they didn't score a lot on, on LSU, and so if he can get some dudes in there, and I don't know how many of those Baylor kids are seniors that they're going to lose this they're year. They're not losing a lot. They're not. But they had a hell of a defense last yeah. year, and Aranda is a better defensive mind than what they had there. Yes, I, I do agree with that. Now, that's not to take anything away from Matt Rule. Well, no, but, Rule was an offensive guy, and Rule, Rule was a CEO head coach yeah, also. 100%. 100%. Uh, Todd Graham is the new head coach at Hawaii. Uh, my question on this, and at, so back to the Aranda thing, I think it's a great hire, great move. Uh, obviously, we've got immense respect for Dave Aranda. So, yeah, we uh, this was probably the right move for him at this point. Uh, had he stayed at LSU, like obviously that defense is still going to be good. They got Stingley. They got they got dudes coming back. 
Um, but so let's move on to the Hawaii thing. Todd Graham, former Arizona State coach, former Tulsa coach, former Pitt coach, former blah blah blah. Um, he is the new head coach. He is not exactly a likable guy. Um, I I'm curious. Do you think that this makes them less likable? Because Hawaii is always the fun, innovative. You know, I, I was surprised that they went this direction because they normally bring up the uh, the up and comer. You know, it, they had June Jones, and and they've done a couple of things since. I'd say they had Norm Chow and June Jones. Those guys weren't up and comers. They were agreed, they but, were I, but NCAA but, lifers. But they've never had a guy that the public perception of him is not likable, right? Todd yeah, Graham. But I, I, I think he's going to drastically change based on not being likable. Is he not likable at Arizona state? Is he not likable, you know, in, in the pac 12 where recruiting is a meat grinder and you're dealing with all the things that, that these big schools are having to deal with all the media pressures. They're not there at Hawaii. Nobody, nobody's showing up for his press conference at Hawaii, and and and, and the media is not grilling him on why he went for it on fourth and seven instead of punting. No, no, those questions aren't going. So who's not going to like him? Who's going to be hard to be around? His that's, athletic that's director. I don't, I don't know if the athletic director is insanely involved in Hawaii. You don't hear about <laughs> any of these things, right? True. The only time they, they never fire a guy. They always the, the guy always does well enough and realizes. Life on the mainland's cool for a couple of years, or in the islands are cool for a couple of years. But at some point in time, you want to get back to real life, yeah. and you can't live in paradise. And so, so that these guys just come back. I think this could regenerate his career. And I always question the not likable thing. There are certain guys that are just not likable. Jim Harbaugh and Urban Meyer and Nick Saban are not likable people. That's but, a good point. They, they're not, and that is unified across the board. Nobody can argue against that. If you say they're likable, you're lying and you're biased. But <laughs> other than that, I don't know who's not likable. Like There was a time where I thought Brian Kelly was an asshole, and I think early in his career he did some things that were pretty awful. But I don't know that today he's not likable. So – and that's he stayed at the same job. You, you might be and right. not a lot in his life has changed. So, you know. You you might be right about that. I'm I'm very curious how it's gonna work out. Uh obviously, like the guy has a knack for for picking assistant coaches. Uh his two of his OCs while he was at Arizona State, Mike Norvell, Billy Napier, uh, we know the track record on those guys. Pretty so, pretty damn good head coaches, pre- huh? Pretty good. They uh they learned under under him, I think uh, uh was Malzahn at Tulsa under him? I think so. Yeah, yeah, think, I think yeah so. but Malzahn was already kind of a thing before he got there. Malzahn was a high school oh, yeah. kind I mean, of he, phenom. He had, he had been at Arkansas before that. And, but yeah, he I was about Houston to say, Nutt, under, under Petrino, right? Yeah, no, under uh, uh, Nutt. under Houston Nutt. Nutt. Yeah. That's right, Nutt. I'm sorry. So, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be interesting. So let's uh, let's go ahead and move on here. Let's move to the NFL. And we've got a lot to uh, to discuss with that, of course. Eli Manning has retired. He announced the retirement. I believe, uh, well, he didn't. The Giants did, and he's going to make his big thing on Friday. So if you're listening to this on Friday morning, uh, yeah, there you go. Eli Manning retired. Uh, is he a first ballot Hall of Famer? Uh, a lot of people were discussing the fact that, you know, he gets out of the NFL a year before any of these other guys, Drew Brees, Roethlisberger, uh, Brady, et cetera. Like, all these guys are expected to play again next year. Uh, who else is going to be in the in the same class as him, the same year? Well, uh, I mean, you're going to have other people that didn't get in on their first ballot that's that's going to be in those classes. Right. I don't know that first ballot matters. Is he a Hall of Famer? I think so. I think he I is, think he gets. I think he gets in the Hall of Fame. And, and I think he gets in, you know, in his lifetime. We're not going to have this situation where 40 years from now he dies and he never got in. No, okay. I, I agree. I agree. But, I, th- I think he's a first ballot guy. I think he gets I, in immediately. Uh, I mean, two Super Bowl MVPs, top ten in passing, top ten in touchdowns. Uh, he's a Manning, for God's sake. I mean, it, you if know. he gets in first ballot, it will strictly be his name and name alone. I, I think, and that's you're right. and that's true. And I don't, I'm not knocking the guy. I think he had an unbelievable career. He made a ridiculous amount of money. He came into the league at the 
perfect time oh, he, to come he into leads, the league. He leads the NFL in money earned. Damn like, straight. That's insane to me. That's Checks it. cash by the NFL. That yeah. guy's got him. And uh, and he's he's here's what I always thought about Eli. Okay, Eli's got a lot of criticisms. All right, he's got a lot of flaws. He's got a lot of holes in his game that you can knock him and you can make fun of him about. One thing you can't argue is he did more with less than almost anybody in the league. I, I truly believe that outside of Tom Brady, he did more with less in his career because he didn't have a ton of stars. There aren't a whole lot of other Hall of Famers that he played alongside most of his career. It, now, they're, he, he they're had OBJ, which, but he didn't do much with OBJ. But aside from that, I mean, the big names like that made big plays for him in the Super Bowl, I mean, it was David Tyree, it was Sterling Shepard, it, you know, like these are not Jeremy Shockey, I guess. Yeah. Like it, you know, who else did he have? Uh, uh, Plexico Burris had a big catch, but Plexico came there at the end of his career. Yeah. Like, you after, know, after he had already got a name for Offensive line was kind of always shaky and, and, and not great. The defense was every now and then great and every now and then kind of atrocious. And, and you kind of never knew were they going to be really good or really bad from season to season. Uh, I, I just thought he accomplished so much more than I think realistically the expectations were set. I, had he done this anywhere besides New York, I think it like we wouldn't even be having the conversation. Like I, this would have been a Hall of Fame career at any other stop. Like you think they would want two Super Bowls at, at Cincinnati, at Cleveland? Sure. Yeah, at, that's I right. mean, just think yeah. about it. like and say he had done this with the Chargers. I mean, oh, yeah. You know, and I think just just the postseason success alone. Uh, I, I, I'm a defender of Phillip Rivers in this situation all the time. I, I think both of them are great. Uh, Phillip has always had substantially more talent around him than Eli ever did. Yes. 100%. Now, Phillip didn't have to go through Peyton and Tom to get to a Super Bowl, which is why he never made it to one. Um, he couldn't beat those two guys, those two teams. Uh and Eli didn't have to do that. There was no elite juggernaut in the NFC that he had to go through. True. Both times he won it, they won it from the wild card, playing on the road, and they were 8-8 eight and eight throughout the season. Didn't yeah. matter. They got in, got hot, won it all. Yeah. And that, that's partly what led me to think that the Titans had a chance to make it to the Super Bowl this year. That's right, uh, yeah, because we've seen it happen. Yeah. We've seen it happen in recent memory with these guys. Uh, the next topic I wanted to bring up, Antonio Brown has an arrest warrant out. I don't think that they have actually arrested him yet, but I would assume that the Hollywood, Florida Police Department will make an appearance at his home on Friday. Uh, what what path is he going down? Like, at, how much how much credit do the Steelers deserve for putting up with him as long as they did? And and do you think that this is what happens to guys? after not playing football. Like, do you the think Steelers he would do don't better? deserve any credit, Gary, because they didn't put up with any of this stuff. He didn't do any of this crap when he was there. Well, I'm wondering if there was and any of this. And if he did, then they covered it up and they didn't get the guy help. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Um, because if he did some of this junk and some of this crap happened under their watch, you know, him sexually assaulting that girl happened while he was in Pittsburgh playing for them. That's true. They got a history of covering up for sexual assault, dudes. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it, it's just one of those things where I don't know that they're not to blame for some of this, but I am very big on personal accountability. This is not the Steelers' fault. Now, they're not – listen, you're trying to make them out to be heroes in this deal. Well, not, they, not heroes, but, but – they're, they're, vi they're villains, if anything else. Well, if they're you, accomplices. If you look at who they had on the roster with, with those two guys, with Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown, with the egos and all of the mess that, that comes along with them. And, they and Ben able, Roethlisberger with the and, ego and, and, and the mess. And they were able to kind of keep this, like, in-house – yeah. Keep the hush hush, very much college town. Keep it hush hush. Where we can make but, stuff disappear, but also be able to win. Like they were able to win. Well, if Antonio with Brown was on the field this year, and all this stuff didn't come to light, and somebody was able to keep it hush hush and to and to sweep it under rugs, then I think that team would have won. If he was playing for the Bills, if he was playing for the Raiders, they're making the playoffs. Do you think and they're that making any a playoff this, run? Do you think any of this happens 
like that's going on with him right now, do you think any of this happens if he was playing? Yeah. Because think so? I think the guy's gone insane. I think he's gone over a cliff at some point in time. Something in his brain has snapped. I yeah. mean, Drew Rosenhaus, his agent, has disassolved himself from all of this. He's washed his hands and says I'm out. And that guy can put up with a lot. Yeah. And that guy has dealt with some tough customers over the years. And he is he has eaten his plate of shit in the past. And he ain't eating this. No, he he decided And that tells me that tells me That's Drew it. knows the truth and Drew knows this guy is guilty as sin of everything he's been a- accused of and it's only a matter of time before it all falls down and he will not be attached to it. I uh I feel bad because It's sad. It, yeah, it's sad. It, it like he's got kids. He's But this you is know. the bed he's made, man. I mean, just cuz somebody's got kids, dude, if you're an asshole, you're an asshole. If you're a terrible person, you're a terrible person. Yeah. No, you're right. Sometimes bad things happen to good people and they didn't really do anything wrong, but somebody wants to make an example out of them. This is not that. No, this I, isn't I, that I at all. I agree with you. Uh, let's talk about something positive to uh, to end the NFL talk. The Pro Bowl is this weekend down in Orlando, and Lamar Jackson is the star of the show. Uh, I did not realize how popular he is with kids, man. So we went to eat dinner at the commissary tonight, and there was a just a table full of kids with their parents and all this, and it was friends that obviously had just come from playing a basketball game or something like that, and they were talking about all this NBA stuff, and the only NFL player that they discussed at all was Lamar Jackson. And it, yeah. that's not the first that I've heard of it. Like, he is... Lamar Jackson is a friggin' superstar. And you see all the videos of him with the kids down there. Uh, Drew Brees' kids, you know, wanted Lamar Jackson autographs. They had all the Baltimore Ravens gear on and everything. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, that blew me away. I, I was I was very surprised by it. Uh, I don't know why. You I don't know, know why I, either. I, I, I you were late be. to the party on this, man. I told you this guy is going to be a superstar. He's going to destroy this league. He, uh, it, it's, he is so insanely likable. Like it's yep. just it's crazy. Yep. Um he's he's awesome. So I'm, he's I'm everything positive you could want in your quarterback and your leader of your team yeah. and in the face of your franchise. He is everything you could absolutely desire. That's uh, he they ran into a buzzsaw, I think, taking two weeks off yeah. really hurt that team. And and I also think that a lot of credit has to go to the Titans and Vrabel and just being able to be prepared and just said, We're gonna shut Lamar down. And you got to find another way to beat us. And I'm going to put three guys behind him. Not one, not two. I'm going to put three. I'm going to put one on the left, one on the right, one in the center. And he's not going anywhere. Yeah. And we're going to man-to-man defense everybody else, and we're not going to blitz him. You, uh, you brought up desire, how it, it, Lamar is everything you would desire out of a quarterback. Uh, what about this Pro Bowl? Is there, is there anything that you actually want to see? Are you going to watch it? How's that? No, I won't watch a second. I don't think I will either. I won't watch one second of it. I, I the watched. only thing I ever enjoy about the Pro Bowl week is the skills competition stuff. Yeah, but but that used to be like a big thing. One day, whatever. Now they've got some weird schedule where they spread it out and they they videotape it in different segments. I don't. I'm, I'm not. I'm not following all week the Pro Bowl crap. I don't care. Yeah, I agree. Well, give me if you want to give me one day. You want to film it all all week and do all that, but but then air it one day cut up and give me like a three hour show I'm in and you'll get my viewership because I really like the skill stuff I like watching these guys do goofy things but they're not not going to search for it for for days no no and I'm not going to spend all week looking at a little bit here and a little bit there Uh, I'm going to get in I'm going to get out uh, not not with the the senior bowl going on because right now a a bunch of the uh the stuff that's out is you know senior bowl practices and everybody getting ready for uh for Saturday's game we want to see what's going on with Jalen Hurts and with Justin Herbert and all that, like where, where are these guys going to go? What are they going to end up doing? Uh, I think I think football fans are more interested in what's coming next as opposed to a game that the players don't even care enough about uh, for the majority of them to even show up, you know? Yeah. And so uh, let's go on and, and move on from that. <laughs> College basketball. Now, you know I'm all in on this. Have you paid attention at all this week? Well, yeah. Okay. Um, the Kansas-Kansas State fight on Tuesday night. This was, it, for anybody that didn't see, 
and I don't know how any of you would not have seen. If you are a sports fan, you would have caught on to this. The Kansas State Wildcats were getting blown out at the very end of the game. And they went to steal the ball and try and make a layup at the very end of the game. And I'm talking final seconds here. This same thing happened to Kansas earlier in the year. Monmouth was down by like 50. Yep. And went up behind the point guard who was just trying to dribble out the clock and stole the ball, ran it down the court, and slammed it with no time left on the clock. Now, Kansas State was down by 20 in this game and tried to do the same thing. And Silvio De Sosa decided he was not going to have that this time, and it got ugly fast, really, really fast. Um, De Sosa picks up a, a bar stool or whatever that's sitting on the end of the court. He picks it up like he's going to hit somebody with it. Now, he didn't ultimately hit anybody, but, I mean, there were multiple punches thrown, all this kind of stuff. Dudes uh, kicking dudes while they're on the ground. That's and, so and it's cheap. In, it's in the handicap section. Yep. I mean, and it, like, it's basically in the stands with spectators right there. Uh, this was an ugly, ugly situation. Uh, first question, does DeSosa deserve to come back? Obviously, he had all the NCAA stuff going on. Uh, he was suspended I, first last off, year. First off, I can't believe this kid's playing at all. How Wiseman at Memphis got approved and then not approved later, had to fight for his appeal, but because they tried to play him, they suspended him anyway, and it made it a big, long thing. How, how does that happen to Memphis? But Kansas, this guy's originally denied. You can't play. Look, you you openly took money. We know you took money. Or his, and his then, guardians took money, but it's the same. Whatever. Thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, well, okay, we're going to overturn it and we're going to let you play now. Like, that's that's some crap right there, by the way. I agree. I agree. You think Penny Hardaway saw three years in the future and thought, I'm going to, I want this kid in Memphis because I'm going to take that Memphis job in a couple of years? Not a chance. No. That's so ridiculous. So, this makes me hate the NCAA anymore, already more. And if you're not one of the blue bloods, you just don't get to play by the same rules. And, and that, that's some, that's some just horse crap. But, so, so this guy's kind of a piece of shit in my mind anyway. Um, <laughs> should he be suspended for the rest of his life? I don't know. Probably not. But He got I mean, 12 he, games. So he gets to come back for the season finale and then the, uh, the conference tournament and the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I don't, I, don't know that, I don't know that that's like the worst thing in the world. My biggest problem is not just him. Those Kansas dudes that were kicking the kid while he was on the ground, you know what? Screw yeah, those guys. I was really you surprised. Cheap. They only got two guys suspended. One was I like know. four oh, games. Oh, I know, I know. And, like, and and some of them were only like two or three games. You yeah. you kicking a man while he's on the ground, that is the cheapest, weakest stuff I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I don't have any place for you. It, stand uh, up and fight. You don't fight somebody, you stand up and you fight them. But you got a big mob and you're on top of a guy that's down, you're just a coward. I you're agree. just a coward. I don't got I have no I have more I have more place for DeRosa swinging the chair at somebody than I do kicking some kid while he's on the ground. And there's four of I you agree. and one of him. Uh, Kansas becomes more and more unlikable uh, with, yes. with each passing moment of this college basketball season. Obviously, you know, they, they went rogue and they went hard. I mean, they leaned hard into this uh, after they got their NCAA uh, notice of allegations. Uh, it, obviously, they're not going to get any punishment until after the season's over uh, because they got to go through all the appeals and this and that. If this team ends up uh, hoisting the the uh, Naismith Trophy, like I, I just I don't know. There's 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 no sports god. There's no karma in the world if that happens. No, there's there's the problem not. is is there's no great team. Anybody who gets in this tournament can hoist that trophy. Oh, you're right. You're right. I and, mean, and that, Kansas that's, that's is, just a fact. Kansas is one of the better teams. Like yeah, now they 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 have a shot. They're a live shot. Now I wonder where they're going to be at with him missing a lot of the season because well he hasn't been great this year anyway so far. So no, he he hadn't. But uh, but this team was not very good without him last year. Uh, they they True. did not win the Big Twelve Conference for the first time in fifteen years last year after he got suspended. So I mean we'll see we'll see. They, obviously the Big Twelve has a lot of great teams. Kansas already got beat at home by Baylor just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Baylor's number one in the country, got a 15-game winning streak. So, we'll uh, we'll see what happens with that. Tulsa beat number 20 Memphis last night, 80-40. to 40. What was Tulsa ranked? Remind me again. Uh, they were unranked. 
Thank you. Uh, Thank you. First, That's what I first time in 27 years that uh, that an unranked team has beaten a ranked team this badly. The Tigers only hit 16 out of 56 shots. They were only two of 21 from three. Uh, there are problems at Memphis. Uh, this comes right after uh, right after Penny decides to tell the media that he doesn't have he he can't worry about people's feelings right now. He's got to play the best lineup, et cetera, et cetera. The issue that you have with that is you have a ton of heralded freshmen that were all told, or at least all believed, that they were going to be starters and that they are all NBA guys and they were going to be one and dones, and none of them other than Precious Achua are that. So without James Wiseman there, and Precious is quiet to himself, the leaders on the team, if there are any, are the guys that are second-year players that aren't as good as the freshmen who are obviously hitting a slump right now. Uh, Memphis got major league problems, man. Well, I mean, the leader of the team has to be Penny. That's the problem. Yeah. We all wondered, can he coach? He can recruit. That's fine. Can well, I think I think he can X's and O's with, with people as well. I think. Are you but, sure? Yeah, oh, I, I, I would guarantee it. But uh, the question here is, the other part of coaching is being able to manage egos and being able to manage a locker room. Understand team chemistry. And I don't think he understands this team. That right team now. didn't want to be in Tulsa. They no. didn't want to play that game. And that's on him. Either they that's, weren't that's ready to I'm play, saying. which is on him, or they didn't want to do it and he couldn't make them do it. I, and that's I think on that's him. The issue. And it sucks. I want him to do good. I want him to be successful. But that's not a good look. No, it is most certainly not. They uh they've got a big one on Saturday. SMU comes to town. SMU is fourteen and four on the season. Uh now SMU has lost some uh not great games. They lost at East Carolina. You know, they 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 lose games like this every now and then. But I mean, we'll we'll see what happens here because I mean if they if they get blown out like that at home, whoo, that's uh that's not gonna be a good thing. So he's he's got two days to get this team, you know, to to get back into the swing of things and figure out what he's going to do with them. Uh, let's talk about some of the big games for this weekend. Friday night, you've got Marquette and Butler. Butler uh, started out 15-1, and one, got ranked in the top five. They have lost their last three in a row in the last two by 15-plus points. I don't know what has happened to the Butler Bulldogs, but uh, Marquette is not an easy win. That's, no, and I, th- I think they're getting to the meat of the schedule is the biggest thing. I mean, they they had really big wins in the off season. I mean, they like big. Yeah, wins. but I don't know that any of that stuff matters. I, I mean, you might not, be right. If, if you're not playing when it counts, some of these some of these teams go to these trips. They go to New York. They go to the Bahamas. They go to Hawaii, and they're just there for the party because none of this, this is all preseason, and yeah. nobody cares. Now, you're right. You're right. Uh, so that's Friday night's big game. Saturday, of course, I mentioned SMU at Memphis. Uh, you've also got the Big 12 SEC Challenge. you got Tennessee at Kansas. Uh, Kansas, obviously, got a couple of guys suspended for this one. College game day is going to be there, so you know they're going to talk about all of this stuff. It's going to be I bet game day wishes they could go somewhere else now. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Tennessee is not very good. And that, that's the bad thing about uh, – so college game day in football, it is obviously fluid, right? So they set it up on a week-by-week thing. So you never know where they're going to go until Sunday. But with college basketball, they set game day before the season even starts. Yeah, it's it's planned out. It, it's a little weird to me that they can't just decide because they do it all indoors. It's not like they have to find, you know, logist. And it's you're not dealing with 100,000 people. Nope. So nope. if you're going to do it, smaller. why not just find the best game and, and, and I'm don't. sure on paper this looked like a great game before the season started. Yeah. But right now, I would not want to be anywhere close to this this Kansas team. Or this Tennessee team. I mean, obviously, Tennessee well, won Tennessee's the last two good. games. They look, are they great? No, but, like, Coach Barnes is a good coach. Like, that's a good program. And I, I would have no problem game day going to a UT game. No, but no problem at all. Going, going to this week's game, you oh, don't yeah. want to be a part of this. No, you're right about that. Uh Dayton at Richmond, which may not seem like a big game, but Dayton is ranked in the top ten. They're number seven in uh, in the latest AP and coaches poll. Uh, Richmond quietly doing pretty well. They're fifteen and four on the season. They are in the top forty two in the net. Um, this is this could be a very interesting game. 
if Dayton were to lose a conference game, this would probably be it. Uh, so we'll see if uh, if the Flyers can get through that. Uh, Anthony Grant, former Alabama coach, is doing wonderful things at Dayton. Uh, they had 25 assists on 35 made baskets against St. Bonaventure the other night. Just beautiful, beautiful basketball. Obi Toppin, for anybody that has not watched him, that kid can absolutely light it up. He's, uh, he's going to be an NBA guy. So pay attention to Dayton at Richmond. We've got Kentucky at Texas Tech. Uh, neither team has been great this season. Texas Tech got beat on Wednesday night at TCU by, like, double digits. Um, are, are you surprised at, at this Texas Tech team? I know they lost a lot last year, but I, we all have a lot I'm, of faith I'm, in Chris. I'm Bishop. more surprised at TCU. They're, they're a great story this year. Yeah. Yeah, you're that's, right. That's that's what I'm more surprised about. I knew Texas Tech was going to fall off. They lost some dudes. That was that was the most athletic team I had seen in a tournament in a long time. Yeah, but but part of the, being that athletic is is they had a bunch of transfers. They had a bunch of older guys that weren't you know one and done freshmen, and and they were super athletic dudes. Yeah, you lose that, and you're not a. Kentucky, a you know a, a Tennessee, a Memphis, a Kansas, a Baylor, uh, not a Baylor, um, you know, UConn, all these schools that are that are just historically good. You're just not going to be great every year. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with this. True, true. Uh, Kentucky is playing a lot better uh, since they lost to South Carolina. They got a, Kentucky's uh, going to get better as the year goes on. Yeah. Anybody who thinks Cal Perry is not a good coach and he's just a recruiter is an idiot, and they just hate the man. You just hate him, and that's fine. That's fine. He's he's an unlikable person. We talked about unlikable people earlier. Yep. He's easy to not like, but he's a hell of a basketball coach, and all of his teams get far better at the end of the year than they are at the beginning of the year. That's a mark of a good coach, yes. not just a great recruiter. Yes, you are correct. So I'm, I'm very interested to see that. Uh, obviously, that, game I, that, that is a team that you hope if if you don't like them, you hope they find injuries at the end of the year, because if they're hot come tournament time, oh, they yeah. could take it all. He's he's that good of a coach and they they have the pedigree. Oh, yeah, they most certainly do. Uh, speaking of pedigrees, number one, Baylor travels to Florida. So they, they got to go play in the O-Dome. This is where yeah. game day should be if they could rotate stuff and, and, and flex things. I this agree. is a spectacular game. Yes, yes. And the location is everything. The Florida fans will be fired up for this. That's right. Florida is not ranked, and that's okay. Uh, they, they lost a close one at LSU uh, just a couple of nights ago. At, look, LSU undefeated in conference play, but, but yep. Florida is playing really, really well right now. And Florida's a good team. Even yeah. even when Florida's had down years, they're still a really good basketball team. And, and they're they, never phoning it in. They always seem to play better once it gets to, you know, to tournament time, once it comes to right. big games. Yep. So, February, and, M- March, yeah. Yeah, 100%. And then Sunday. That's, that's the mark of really good coach teams, by the way. I mean, yes. that's it. You're right. You're right. I don't I don't care that you're not playing good in November. Nobody nobody cares. Nobody remembers November or December. No, you're right about that. It does February, have March, resumes, it but but that's about it. Um Sunday's big game, the noon game is Maryland at Indiana and I'm uh, I'm actually watching Indiana and Michigan State right now. Indiana is up by 3 with a minute 48 left in this game. Uh Indiana is sitting at 14 and 4. Maryland 15 and 4. They're ranked in the top 15 right now. Uh, Maryland fans, like this has been a weird year for them. I mean, they they were preseason top ten, yeah, and they've played well, you know, like I guess, but but they always seem to lose these games. And their coach, like the fans for Maryland, don't know which way to go with this because they're good enough for their coach to not you know ever lose his job, but they're not good enough to win the Big Ten or even compete really in the NCAA tournament. Like they'll probably make it to the NCAA tournament. But no man. Is, I I think they're going in the right direction. I agree. I mean I, I think Sunday will tell us a lot about them. Um they did get a win over Purdue the other night. Um uh, but yeah, I I mean we'll see. We'll see. It, it's a very strange basketball game. I know it I know this is like a dumb thing and it doesn't equal wins and losses on the court, but some reason I feel like it does SVP moving to the DNC, you know, that's going to, he's, he's closer to Maryland. He's going to be at all those games. I could see them picking up some recruits, man. There's talent in DC. 
There's a hundred percent. Yeah. There's, there's, and, a lot I, of and, I, and, and, and that guy can get them there. So he's got, wait. he's got an hour show at the end of every night where he goes on national TV and he gets to tell people come to Maryland, play basketball. Is he, so he moved to what? Uh, he moved he to DC? DC, him and he's, he's now doing his show out of their DC studio. Wow. That is surprising. Okay. That's awesome. Yep. That's I had part no of my idea. take just moved into the new studio that they built for him. That's crazy. So that's crazy. Wait, pardon my take or, or, Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, God. PTI. Oh, pardon the interruption. Yeah. Pardon the interruption. I was there. No, you know I was like, mean? Barstool is working with this? No. What? No. Barstool's there. Well, he would work with those guys. I know he no, would. Just, that, would <laughs> that wouldn't shock anybody. So I guess I do need to clear that up. No, you're right yeah, about no. that. Uh, let's, uh, we got three more topics to hit on. Let's go on and run through these. <laughs> Zion's debut. Now, let's talk about. What happened with the Pelicans last night? I want to get your opinion on on what happened. Uh, he is he got twenty two points in eighteen minutes. Um, Pretty efficient. Eight of eleven shooting, four of four from three. He had what seven eight rebounds, something like that. And they pull him with what four or five minutes left in the game. Yeah, he only played eighteen minutes, so he he didn't he didn't play a lot. I thought he would play about twenty five. Um, and hell, 25, he's there at the end of the game where, you know, you get down to dick cutting and you got a chance to win the game. Well, I mean, it, um, he would have only, it, had it not gone to overtime, he would have had, what, a total of 22 minutes? Yeah. Um, why, like, explain, explain the minutes restrict, uh, restriction to me from your point of view. Like, well, it totally makes sense. A guy coming off an injury like that, that you you're trying to, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a a, a long time veteran. If it, it doesn't, no, nothing matters, other than the fact that you're coming off an injury, and we want to ease you back into high intensity competition. Don't do you think that's bad for the NBA? Because it's it's basically just telling fans we really don't care at all about these regular season games. Well, no, I don't think it's bad for the NBA because this is a legit injury. What's bad for the NBA is is a guy played, you know, 40 minutes Monday, and so Wednesday night he's not going to play at all. Like, that's bad for the NBA, all right? And we're not going to put him on the plane to even come to your your stadium and let our fans see him. Like, that's 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 bad for the NBA. But him – actually coming off of like real knee surgery and a, a legit injury, you can't throw him out there and play him 30 minutes a game. He's going to hurt himself again, and then all this was waste. Does this true. game matter enough to where if he got hurt again in this game, would it, you know, is it worth it? No. no probably not. Probably no. Not. That's the downside of having 81 games. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, the 82 next, games. The next thing that I wanted to hit on, Derek Jeter, um, Derek Jeter gets into the Hall of Fame. Now let's let's go ahead and of course applaud Larry Walker. Finally gets in. Cheers to that. Um, but Jeter, of course, is the big name here. He gets in first ballot. He was oh so close to being unanimous. Do you have a problem with the guy that left him off of his ballot? No, the unanimous thing is ridiculous. He's still. Same thing I said about Eli. He's a Hall of Famer. If he gets it on the first ballot, if he gets it on the fifth ballot, he's going to get in, he's going to get his jacket, and it's not going to be forever, okay? Yeah. He's going to get in because he's deserving. Derek Jeter is absolutely a first ballot Hall of Famer. Who gives a shit if you are get all the votes, none of the votes, some of the votes, it doesn't matter. You're in or you're out. You're in, and you're a first ballot guy. I'm, nobody, uh, nobody until last year or two years ago, whenever it was that Mariano Rivera got in, has been unanimous. And Mariano Rivera is the most likable person, maybe in all of sport. I it was surprised that it was only one game. vote. Like I was really surprised it was only one. I mean, vote. Babe Ruth didn't. Get, I mean, this is the old re, like logic. Ted Williams didn't get unanimous vote. Babe Ruth didn't get unanimous votes. Yeah, Derek yeah. Jeter's not half the man those guys were. He's a hell of a good baseball player. But he ain't those guys. I, and I, so somebody is going to say, I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm not going to vote for him. Okay, thanks, Frank. We appreciate you taking this one. Next year, it'll be somebody else will bite the bullet, and everybody will scream and holler, take that guy's vote away. If we took 
that guy's vote away every year, there'd only be like nine people voting in the Hall of Fame. I think this is good. Like, I, I, I don't think that everybody should vote for the same people all the time. No, because I and think baseball you, is very much a you can only vote for five and yeah. you have to get a percentage to get in. It's not a unanimous or a majority or anything of that nature. It's voting rules are different than all the other sports. Yeah. And with that being said, I have no problem with him voting for somebody else outside of Derek Jeter, knowing why waste a vote on Jeter who's going to get in when this poor sap, I think, belongs in the Hall of Fame. And he might not get in if we don't vote for it. So why vote for a dude you know is getting in when you only got five? I agree. And there's no ranking to it. There's no hierarchy. Yeah, it, it, this isn't a Heisman vote. This isn't anything. Like, I, I think the further we get away from groupthink, uh, the better that that this Hall of Fame voting and everything else will be. Like, yeah. I, I think this was good for it. Outside of absolute legends and heroes, I would have no problem being the guy that says, I'm going to vote for the older guys that nobody's paying attention to that I think belong in the Hall of Fame. And, and the game has passed them by, and nobody talks about them anymore. But you know what? The Hall of Fame was made for the greatest of greats, and I think some of those guys are still out there that are not in yet. And I'd vote, I'd waste my vote on getting those dudes in. And if it means not voting for somebody who's an absolute shoe in, then so be it. Yeah. I like Now, if I had a chance to vote for a guy who was a hero of mine, David Ortiz, then I'm not going to leave him off because I want that history and memory of voting for my guy. But other than other than the guys that I am connected to emotionally and have been my whole life, then then I don't then I don't care. You're getting in, and you're getting in on the first ballot, and you're getting in in a landslide. Yeah. So I'm going to throw some votes to some of these older guys that might not get in. But if my one vote gave them the percentage over, then I'd be really glad I didn't waste it on a guy trying to get him unanimous. I yeah. just I just don't understand that. No, I, I agree. You get in the jacket, you get in the ring, you're getting in the Hall of Fame, and you're a first ballot, and, and everybody don't knows you're one of the greatest players. You you don't get a an even more shiny jacket if you got unanimous. It doesn't matter. No, like, it doesn't matter. It it really doesn't. There are some awards where it matters the percentage that you got and how did you get it and all this other stuff. This is not one of them. No, no, you're right. All right, last topic before we head out of here. Do you know who Big Rob is? I don't. Okay, let me explain Big Rob for you. Big Rob is a, I guess we can call him uh, an Instagram gambler. I guess that's a good way of putting it. Um, I started following him because he made a, a giant name for himself. He bets with his gut. He won a bunch of money, or at least he claimed to. Um, I mean, the guy was internet famous. I mean, just super internet famous. And on on here, and it, it looks like maybe he deleted his, I think he did. Good gracious. Uh, so he used to send me uh, DMs regularly. Now, this was a bot. It was whatever. But the DMs were super creepy. Uh, oh, I think, I think he deleted his account, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Uh, he had millions of followers. And they just announced that a federal grand jury indicted him on charges this past week where the story is he quote-unquote stole $10 million from a quote-unquote investor. And what happened here? Somebody that he met online that he was scamming, he was, he was trying to be a tout, trying to sell picks, and all that, and somebody gave him $10 million that lives in Chicago for him to go and put on these games, and he wanted his return on investment, right? So, like, whatever you win, I get this, and you get a percentage of it, and I want my $10 million back, and whatever. There was no contract. There was no whatever. Basically, it was just some guy that sent another guy $10 $10 million, and said, go gamble this and make me some money. Now, if you give money to somebody to gamble with, 
without a contract and they don't gamble it, should that be illegal? Am I like it? I don't. I don't know. I feel like that can't be everything that's right. That's that's the. There has to be something in writing. There has to be an email or a text message back and forth agreeing to do something. Because but, nobody but, talks but on the phone a, anymore. Does a text message or an email absolutely? Constitute a if, contract? Oh, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. If you tell me you're gonna do something and we come to an agreement on it, and then money exchanges hands, I can show proof that I paid for what we agreed upon, and then you just take my money and never come back. That is absolutely a contract. That is something that we agreed upon in writing. How is it? What's what is the contract, Gary? Uh, You don't have to get lawyers involved. You don't have to get something notarized. It's just two people coming to an agreement and putting it in writing. I mean, that's a good point. So a text message or an email, I'll tell you this. Our attorney, I do floors for a living. Our attorney has told us, and I have a, a letter from him, but to save face and to save paperwork and all this other stuff, I can email someone a quote for a job, and they just have to email me back approved, and that's it. Now we have a legal contract back and forth, and I just need a one word of approved. And that's it. Whatever I sent them in my quote is what they have agreed to now, and now we have a contract. Interesting. This is not a complicated thing. You don't have to get lawyers involved. Now, you probably should if you're dealing with $10 million. Like, what's a lawyer going to cost? Like, to me in a small business, yeah, a couple thousand bucks is a big deal. $10 million bucks? couple thousand dollars, nothing. Go get a great attorney, get him to draw you up an ironclad contract and put it down in writing. Yeah, I, I agree. But I, I, I just don't because feel bad. he didn't do that doesn't mean the guy should have stole you. He's a scumbag. He stole the Sue's money. Yes, and look, I, I will agree with that. I know he's a scumbag. He's, he's been a scammer. He's been a, a scamming tout for years now. He's got all these pictures up on Instagram of him with all these famous people and you know, wearing all these expensive clothes and whatnot. Well, it was all fake. It was all just a, a look, and he was trying to get you to give him money. Like, of course, my thought process has always been, if you are selling picks, why don't you just go make the picks, and that way you can make the money? Why do you yeah. need my money? But right. there are some of these guys that fully buy into this crap, and pardon me if I don't really feel that bad for somebody that handed over $10 million to a tout and asked him to go gamble it for him rather than just getting the picks and going to gamble yourself. If you got $10 million, you can fly to Vegas and make your own bets. Like, I, that just seemed dumb to me. Like, I almost feel like he should have to forfeit the $10 million just for being that dumb. Well, I'm sure the $10 million is gone. If I had to guess, I'm going to well, yeah. guess this guy blew that $10 million. He oh, wants yeah. him to go to jail for theft. And that's that's Okay. The guy lost his 10 mil, and this guy's going to lose his freedom. I'm okay with both of those. I, you know what? I guess you're probably right. You're probably right. Like, I would assume that this, was, uh, this wasn't necessarily to get the money back. It was to I mean, if you, if you get, yeah, because this is in civil court, he filed criminal charges. Yeah. So criminal charges means I want his ass thrown in jail. Yeah. I know he done blew the money. Yeah, you're right. So, and yeah, shame on him. And you, but you know what though? You get an opportunity in this world to have buyer's remorse. I mean, almost every product or every service that is sold, there are, every state has different laws about like buyer remorse laws or whatever to where you can return anything or you can exchange anything or you can, you know, say you're not pleased with something. And therefore, you know, you're, you're owed, if it was a service, like you're owed something for for whatever they have to work do so much to make it right and if you made claims that i guarantee you i can double this 10 million and you put that in writing anywhere a text message or an email then or or a recorded phone conversation then then that's, you made a agreement. claim yeah and then if i said okay here's 10 million dollars can you double this and you said yes you just click the prove brother yeah, you're on the hook, and I need my twenty million. That's a that's a very valid point. So while while the guy is an idiot, you know, he 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 still has. There are laws protecting people who are suckers and who who just buy stuff and get scammed. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. All right. I do believe that is going to wrap it up for this evening. Uh, is there anything else we need to hit on? I think that's it, man. I think that's it. We're going to be back. We're going to record again on Sunday night. Uh, obviously, we will have much to discuss. We are getting ready to preview the Super Bowl. We'll be doing that on Tuesday night, so that uh, podcast will be out on Wednesday. Uh, we will have stuff out on Monday and Tuesday, of course. Uh, go over to winningcureseverything.com, of course. All of our stuff is over there. Uh, all of our picks, previews, podcasts, whatever. Make sure you hit subscribe on the podcast. Leave a nice review. Make sure you hit like, hit subscribe. Leave some comments on the YouTube uh, if that is where you're watching right now. Uh, if that is it, oh, go to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. They bring in the show every week. Go check out their sports books. We are, uh, we are working on our NCAA tournament uh, setup. Uh, I got an email today. We are in the middle of getting that squared away. We will let you guys know hopefully next week sometime. Uh, I think we can get it done fairly quickly. If not, it'll be the week after the Super Bowl. But we'll let you know. NCAA tournament opening two days. Uh, We will be somewhere down in Tunica, and we'll let you know as soon as we find out. Uh, In the meantime, we will see you guys again uh, next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.